All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chrissy Chaos. Today, my guest is our first Asian American guest and American Asian guest. You've known him from his hit podcast, Bad Friends. Uh, you know him from Tiger Belly. You know him from Mad TV. You know him from being in the movie with Jamie Lee Curtis, Bobby Lee, a.k.a. Bobby Lee Tard, very close friend of mine, and his belly button's out. And his, his dictator sunglasses are on. And thank you so much, Bobby, for coming on the show. We've been talking for 45 minutes before, which probably was the podcast. You fuck me. You How? fuck me hard. How? You fuck me real long. You f almost destroyed my relationship with my girlfriend. So can you tell me? Because you told me you wouldn't tell me about, because I've been asking him for the last 25 minutes. Why do white do people fuck us? What do you mean? Yeah. They just like to fuck around and fuck ethnics and stuff. Not, not not in a sexual way, but fuck us over and shit, No, but bro. white guys love fucking... I mean, we love having sex with Asian women and men. Yeah, I get that. We're tight. Tight? Yeah, yeah, but... But um, well, what happened? So why why did you... Because you said that your girlfriend, lovely girlfriend, Kalila, you said that I almost ruined your guys' relationship. Yeah, so remember the last time you were here with your camera crew? Yeah, with Tiger Belly. Right, and you caught... You had your camera guy, though. Yeah, the homeless pimp who's right here. right? Yeah. That was the homeless And then you got, me, you got on tape me saying, just tell Kalila that you're... Remember? Do you remember? No. That? Yeah. Did we? I think so. Yeah. You released that. I don't even remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You released that. It comes out, and it literally is a day of like, like literally going murder. No one, <laughs> no, number one murder, but I'm like, I don't know how to, I don't, how do I, I don't know where he lives. But what did yeah, I don't know. No, just, just let me finish. I don't know where he lives. You know what I mean? It's like, how do I murder a white dude like that? But, you know what I mean? You just had a baby. So it's like, how do I... So then I'm sort of like, I guess we're going to break up. Right? It was like really tragic, dude. It like, you fucked me. And then also on top of it, what is that? Vaccination card. I know, but that's not now. Now you are. No. But before you weren't. March 27th to... March 27th. And what was the date of the fucking thing? And, and, and April 24th was the second show. No, no, no. Yes. April 24th was my second shot. Dude, then why we would, why, then when, when, you get it, when you walked out of the car, right, and you said, I'm not vaccinated, then why'd you lie to me there? Because I was just doing it as a bit. No, you're just... Yes, it is. You, it was way before then. I was just doing it as it a bit. It was way before March and whatever you're fucking doing right Welcome now. Welcome to Chrissy Chaos Podcast. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, understand. Uh -huh. I understand that. So then you did that, right? Uh-huh. But that was after, you I mean, you came and you brought the Mexican over to Bad Friends. Yes, Don DePetta. And, and then you got... My fucking red, red sick from COVID. Yes. Right? So it's like two fucking things, bro. But, okay, the first one with Don getting, 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 giving everybody COVID, that I didn't know that he had COVID. He felt terrible, and he honestly deserves to die for that. I'm, I wish he would have died of COVID for that. But, but, but he didn't. Second of all, the second thing is, is I did it as a joke. I did the vaccine thing as a joke. With Kalila, but yeah, I it didn't play. But I didn't know that Pimp even put that in because I'm not doing a good enough job of watching my own footage. Yeah, I'm just say, letting you know, regardless of what why it happened, what your intentions are, what it it almost fucked me raw, bro. But it didn't. It did. So it grew, I know, no, but you know, it's, it's relationship stronger. It not really, and also, why 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 did I have to deal with the fucking hassle? Well, is there, does Kalila, is Kalila mad at me now still, or she's okay with me? She has suspicions. About me being vaccinated. Yeah, we, well, we, we already in the house have suspicions toward the whites, mm -hmm. right? Right. Because of other, of other events. No, I okay? get it. And also other experiences in our life. Right? I get it. But, you know, it's like one of those things where it's, you know, it's like if we were in Tatooine, mm -hmm. right? And I was a Jawa, right? right. I'm still going to trade with the humans, right. right? But, you know, it's like if the humans do something shady like Luke Skywalker or whatever, right? There's going to be a problem, right? I'll call the sand people, you know, and we have you know, this and that, right? My point is, is that, but you're acting shit. I don't what do know you mean what, the sand people, like Middle Eastern? Yeah, that's what they are, right? Oh, okay. I don't know if it was no, a no, Star I mean, Wars were the thing. sand people were the sand people? I, I would say the people from, from the Middle East. But they never said anything. They didn't go, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, that right. They did do that, actually. They did do that. Yeah, with the stick. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But um, where are they Middle East? What were, If the Jawas... Were those Asians? I've never seen Star Wars, so I don't know. You, you, no. Well, you've never seen Star Wars? I've never seen Star Wars, Star Trek. I've never listened to Star Talk with Neil deGrasse Tyson. 
<laughs> I've never been to a Dallas Stars game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even really look at the Stars because I'm from Brooklyn. You're not a movie guy. All right, Chrissy, stand up's coming to you. We have a few tickets left for Wednesday and Thursday, August 18th and 19th in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the Punchline. Friday and Saturday have been sold out. So we got a couple tickets left for Wednesday and Thursday, August 18th and 19th. Dania Beach, Florida, in the Miami area, the Dania Improv or the Dania Improv. I'm not trying to say it. September 17th, 18th. Really looking forward to that. Cannot wait to get my tits nice and bronze. September 17th, 18th, we got Florida. Then we got October 2nd. We just released a few tickets for Warrendale, Pennsylvania, which is in the Pittsburgh area. And then Nashville, Tennessee, October 14th to the 16th. We got some tickets up. And October 23rd, Monsantucket, Connecticut, Foxwoods, the Great Cedar Showroom. First show nearly sold out. We've added a second show. October 23rd, Chrissy Foxwood's going to be big. And then November 18th to the 21st in Boston. I believe it's all sold out, so I'm sorry. December 17th and 18th, West Palm Beach, Florida. We got Florida twice. I'm Chrissy Florida. I'm going back to back. And December 2nd to the 4th, I missed one, Phoenix, Arizona. So go get tickets, ChristyComedy.com. It's going to be fun. It's going to be cute. Um, I really appreciate all the support. We're having a lot of fun at the shows, and Homeless Pimp will be there wearing corduroy pants. I'm not a movie guy or a TV show guy. I, well, I am a TV show guy. I'm a history. I'm a yeah, history I know, I know that documentary <laughs> guy. Like I just watch on Netflix, um, um, the, the 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 new Tyrant show, How to Become a Tyrant. Yeah. And guess what? what? Guess who the number one people are in How to Become Tyrants? Guess who? who number one? Who? North Korea. All the, they go through all the countries and all the leaders, the Hitlers, the Stalins. The Idi means how they became a tyrant and how they lost it. How they became a tyrant and how they lost it. The only one who has not lost it still to this day is is the Un family, you know. Well, that's interesting that you would point at me when I'm South Korean. No, but it's the same stuff. It's not the same stuff. It's just an imaginary line. It's, an, it's, not, it's not the same stuff. No, it's the same. You are North Korean. I'm not North Korean. You are because you were sent, but you're, it's, you don't realize some people, what they do is they have intel. They make you make believe you're South Korean and American, but you're really North Korean. You're North Korean. You're Bobby. You're North Korean. Okay. The reason why you get all these films and all these things, and you're like, oh, yeah. I'm so, finally, I'm almost 50 years old and I'm getting all these things. That's because Kim Jong-un is making these that, things happen. I never said that, but my point is, is that. Because you're going to get to become like the big, 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 big star, and it's all North Korean propaganda. No, because I'm trying to think of my family heritage and where my dad came from. I came from North Korea. P. No, the, I, no I, absolutely. I'll tell you why. No, mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. No, because my so my mom, my grandmother. Right. Here's how I know you're wrong. My grandmother was paralyzed from the neck down. What happened? She got the dick stroke. Oh, the stroke. The stroke. Right. The stroke. Where did she get the stroke? She got a stroke in Seoul, Korea, where she lives. Wow, and and paralyzed from the neck down. Yeah, and she was like that for like 35 years. In fact, one time, um. She had welts all over. <laughs> she had welts all over her body. She had welts, like like bleeding, like sores. mosquitoes or something. I don't know. Well, my dad goes, "Why, why?" Because my brother and I, I was must have been like maybe nine. My brother was six, and he came up to us and he goes, "Why is she bleeding? You know, why she have scar, scar, scar all over her body?" And we go, "We don't know." And so he, the next day, he comes in the room, and there was my my grandparents had these like this like kind of vase with these like weird branches right okay. with like it was like a, some sort of uh tree i don't know what it was but it's for deck decor but my brother and i had pulled them out and we were whipping my grandmother <laughs> 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 you know i mean just whipping her and she's paralyzed from the neck down so she's just smiling like that right and you're like, you did it you know what i mean and i remember just you know what i mean like getting so angry my point though is is that like um but that was in Seoul, Korea. So that was in North Korea when that event happened. Well, what That's do you think about North Korea? Like, do people in South Korea, like, do they think there could ever be peace in Pyongyang, Yingyang? North Korea? Well, I mean, you can't... Listen, they have... Every citizen in North Korea is essentially in the army. They will fight. They're so indoctrinated and just... They're just going to, they're all going to fight to the end. But it must be because it's such a big country. It, there must be like, like, how do they live? There must be apartment buildings. Are there any podcasts in North Korea? Is no, anybody doing no. a podcast? You're not allowed to. No. There's got to be somebody underground that has a Zoom recorder. No. Somebody had to smuggle a Zoom recorder. Well, no, well, the South DMZ Koreans, line. you know, they, 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 they take, you know, balloons. You know that, right? No. Yeah, they, 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 they take flyers. Sometimes they put like little, what do you, the, for the computer, little um, USBs, USBs or? and stuff in these little packages. And they have these little tiny hot air balloons. I'm not kidding you. 
and they'll put them up in the air. And it'll float toward the North Korea. So they so and then they'll take the fucking if not not I don't know why USBs you, you they don't have computers, but if they did have one. They'd be like, oh, my God, I got what? Right? And, and they could play, like, Bad Boys 2 or whatever. Wow. Yeah, you know I mean, and they're like, oh, America's so great. Do you think most North Korean people know, like, what's going on in the rest of the world? Or because they do, My question is, do you think, actually, North Korean people might be happier than South Korean people because North Korean people don't know anything else because they live in the hermit kingdom and they, they're shunned from the outside world? Well, it's funny because, and I don't know if this is true or not, but um, my perception of them is... Is this years ago? You know, I I go to these like these these China these Asian how do I say it? What these groups? The, there's there's a groups in in Hollywood called Cape. Okay, it's basically an R N W A C P, but for Hollywood and right. stuff. Chinese, and, Asian, Pacific. Yeah, ethnic. when you go, yeah, there's Samoans and yeah. weird ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, but you go, it's like you know, like kind of enough of that, by the way. What? Just the Asians hate. Just shut up. I we've, we've all had enough of it. What do you mean? What do you mean? We'll talk about that in a second. Let okay. me let me go through this, and that just made me mad. Okay, that made me really mad. Okay, and so it's like we'll talk about this. Okay, all right. So um, Let's go. but I was at one of these years ago. I was in one of these groups, and there was this Korean dude, and he go. He spoke broken English. He goes, "Hey, dude, I like a comedy or whatever." And I go, <laughs> "Oh, that's pretty good." <laughs> and he tried to be like urban sometimes when they, like Asians from over there. They go, yo, 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 you know, they, yo, 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 dog, you know what I mean? That type of guy thing. Yeah. And I was like, what's up, what's up, what's up? And he goes, um, I'm doing a documentary right now about cannibalism. <gasps> I go, cannibalism where? North Korea. So, it's, oh. so he explains to me, he goes, because they can't get meat in North Korea and there's so many orphans in the street. I, I don't even know, because if you Google it, I can't find anything. Because there's no pictures or anything. Yeah, yeah, then. so this is what he told me. He goes... So he goes, there's so many orphans on the street and they get hunted for their meat. Oh my God. Right. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I wanted to do like a little, like uh, Annie, but North Korean version. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then you, if you did an Annie North Korean version, you would not have to cast a bunch of kids. <laughs> Just have Annie running for her life. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, like the rest of the orphans are in people's bellies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But you can still have the same songs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tomado, tomado. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be alive tomado. You know what I mean? And, you know what I mean? And they're like, so that's scary, right? So what would you, do you think, though, if you were in North Korea, could you eat a, could you, my question to you is, could you eat a baby? No, well, I think I could because there, this is an actual documented thing where, so there was a couple in North Korea, and this is actually, you can read articles about it. And one of the, I think the woman was working for the, the government. And so when she, she had to go to a different city to go on a business trip. She just told her husband to like, just take care of the kids. And when she got back, he had eaten, I think, the two girls. Oh my God. Yeah. And then the government came, they landed him up against a wall and they just shot him. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I think that for people who want to eat kids and or or pedophiles too, I don't think there's a cure for that. I think that. they're two different things. No. <laughs> no. I think eating kids and a pedophile, pedophilia is two different things. No, but I mean, if you're... A I, I think eating kids, right, is... is You have to be so hungry. Like, let's suppose you are really hungry yeah. and one of your kids is not a good kid. Yeah. Right? He's always drawing or, crayons on the wall. I think... Right? The, the thing is, too, like, or it could be that you're really hungry, or you could have to say, how committed are you to your keto diet? Because if you're, <laughs> <laughs> cause if you're in a place where there's only bread and carbs, and the only thing is, is to eat your kid to get the meat, would you do it? Yeah, to yeah, stay yeah. on keto, to keep your body in keto, genosis, yeah. acidosis. Right, right, right. Huh. You, would do, you look good, though. You look like you're losing. I'm not. Yeah. No, but you. Look, but the thing is with you, Bobby, is you wouldn't look good thin, and you look very proportionate, and you, you actually look healthy. Other than smoking the cigarettes, but all Koreans smoke cigarettes. Thank you. I don't think it, it doesn't affect... All Koreans smoke cigarettes, and all Koreans are, have very good hip flexibility, and they can squat down while smoking a cigarette very well. It doesn't matter if you have knee problems or not. Yeah, yeah. You can squat down with your Hilarious. asshole a couple of inches off the floor to smoke a cigarette. Yeah, That's yeah. true about all <laughs> Korean and Asian people. All humans. No, 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 but specifically Asians. That's a fact. And Koreans, uh, we've talked bro, about... Bro, 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 bro. Like back in the day when white peoples were like the colonial days, yeah, the, the pioneer good, days, right? The good old days, yeah. Right. The, <laughs> their outhouses had a hole in the ground. Yes. How did you do it? You squat like 
Asian smoking a cigarette. No, but squ- I understand that. But I'm saying like right now, like if it's not, it's just you're just saying it's just more comfortable because right. you we're smaller. You know what I mean? And I guess maybe that's the issue. But it's like yeah. it has nothing to do with like we're mutants and we have different like you know what I mean? Yeah. I had a joke about that. I said, um, and you just get a groan when I say um, I have a theory. Um, a Korean guy with Down syndrome is just as smart as the average white guy. <laughs> it's true though. <laughs> It's true. It's true. Yeah. yeah. It's true. They are. But, but there's white people in the audience, so they just kind of go, oh. oh. And so yeah. I just kind of let it go. Let it go. Yeah, yeah. No, but I think I think the Asian hate. Do you think Asian, do you, do you feel unsafe as an Asian? you think somebody's going to beat you up because you're Asian? No, because, um, well, no, because I don't ever live in the house. And also I think that there's like, I was, this is going to sound gross, but if I was like, because, you know, it's in San Francisco, it's happened where like an old, you know, Filipino man or Vietnamese man will get hit over the head, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just never in those areas. And also in those areas, there's a lot of mad TV fans. So, I'll, you know, I mean, there are people that go, what's up? You know, you know, you know what it is like, like walking down New York. People go, Chrissy D or they know yeah. your shit. So I just feel like I have allies out there. So but- me personally, but... You know, if I was working at P.F. Chang's, you know what I mean, as a bus boy, and, you know what I mean, and I was living in, like, mid-America somewhere, and, you know, my shift ends at 10, and, yeah, and I'm th- go- I am would be scared a little bit. But what do you think? Why do you think they people attack Asians? Well, it's the rhetoric of that last president, right? China virus, China virus, China virus, and it's like, you know, when you, 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 when you hear that often enough, you... you you have this hostility because it's affecting your life. It affected everyone's lives, right? So they just want something to blame it on, right? So they, bl- the dumb whites go, oh my God, yeah, they're right. China, right? Asians, right? And they don't even know the difference because there are like Vietnamese dudes that are getting beat up and stuff like that. So they don't even know the difference between Vietnamese and whatever. They just, it's, 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 it's the rhetoric. Honestly, dude, I'm just trying to get into a PCA. You know that, What's right? a PCA? So public service announcement so well, PSA, PSA, PSA PSA I mean PSA you PSA, don't know English I don't know even know how it was said but like so my thing right now is, is that I turn on the YouTube unbutton and stuff little, unbutton the, what? unbutton the one button on your shirt, on your shirt. <laughs> uh, so I turn on the YouTube and stuff and then you have all these like Dr. Ken and John oh, yeah, Cho and Olivia Munn and all these sure. fucking people you know what I mean you know the hostility toward Asians is not right I'm an Asian American it's gotta stop you know what I mean they have these PCAs montage <laughs> I never get asked to do those. No, dude. <laughs> right? Well, That's why I'm talking the way I am now. Well, the, here's so the, that I can get asked to do those. Well, here's the thing, though. Is, is most of I feel stuff, left out. But the you celebrities think? that do that, but the truth is this, is the celebrities that do that, yeah. the, all those celebrities, that everyone, single one you mentioned, if, if, it, if it meant getting another job in Hollywood that they really wanted, they'd eat a North Korean baby right now. <laughs> They're all, you know what I mean? They're all those celebrities. They're all, anytime I see anybody doing that, I'm like, you're a piece of dog shit. You know it. (laughs) And you're trying to wash it off with the PSA. You I like and I would trust because you're not even trying to attempt it. You're just being real and honest. So I'd be like, no, Bobby's actually a good guy. No, I want to do it. Bobby actually wants to help. I want to feel like I belong to a movement or whatever. So you feel you've been labeled a problematic Asian? Oh, 100%. And and I don't know, I, I mean, I don't know who the president of that thing is. But it's like, I know I never get invited to, I don't even get invited to those groups anymore. Wow. The Asian groups, you know what well, I mean? Well, because maybe you're not conforming enough because you're you're making light of it, which which actually- No, I'm not making light of it. No, no, but, I, but, I, I, no but when you make jokes about it, it brings people together. Like you're, you're no, we all, nobody I, wants racism. No, bro, my only purpose is to be authentically myself. Which you are. It's just what, I, what I am. And when I pretend to be something I'm not, it looks weird. I feel funny about it. And also, I'm getting into an age like, fuck it, right? But do I care about old Asian people getting beat up and stuff? Yeah. Do I care about old Asian people being but beat I can't, up? But I care about any old, Asian, any old person getting beat any, up. And yeah, of course. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. nobody yeah. should get hurt. But I, don't, I think like this idea that we're going to have this perfect society is like insane. Well, well, we can strive, though. Yeah, but what are we going to do? We're all going to be dead soon, dude. You're smoking 10 packs of uh, cigarettes right, a you're, day. You're right, you're right. You know, like I'm, I got, I'm in an abusive relationship. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're, you're, right, you're, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Let me do, okay, let's let me, not just have let some me, fun. Okay, let me ask you about this. This is, a, and then I got a question for you. You know what's happening right now in We Spa? What's We Spa mean? We Spa. What's We Spa? We Spa is a spa in Koreatown. Okay, so it's a spa, and we had, right now there's the Proud Boys, and there's big protests going on right now outside the We Spa right here, right now. Wow, today. So um, We Spa is a Korean spa. 
that a lot of it's like the Korean spa that I go to is called Hyundai Spa, mm. and it's on. I can't tell because I want people to go there, but it's like you know it's got cockroaches. Yeah, like you're literally in the steam room with cockroaches and relaxing too. You know <laughs> that's what I mean? What, you need. what? That, it's the no, best. That, that's that's a sign that it's good. Yeah, it's good. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like they they're so rude. They spit in your face. I don't give a fuck, right? But we spa is like the nice one, where like people from Beverly Hills they go right. Some Koreans go. It's it's more, it's owned by Koreans. So I guess I don't know when this happened, but a while back, a transgender person walked into the female side of the spa, right? And there's kids running around. I you know, like girls, little girls running around with their moms and stuff. And this trans a transgender person, you know, has a very large ding dong. Mm-hmm. Walks into the you know what I mean? Walks into this the female spa. And a woman complained, like, hey, I don't want to see a peanut, you know? And now there's this big controversy going on. How do you feel about it? I feel that, I feel that if, if, if just because there's kids running around, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't have your ding dong out in any situation, whether you're trans or male or anything. But that's not the, what's the point? That's your point of view. I just want to hear what your point of view was. So I just think anytime kids, I mean, it's just, it's, it's scary for them to see their genitalia. I think people can do whatever they want to do. I think that I think that um, you can absolutely do like what whatever it is that you'd like to do and be who you are. But if there's children around, then you have to put away your dong. What if there's no children? Then and you're saying, can you go to the female side? Yeah, getting a massage, but you're saying identify as a female. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that should. I think that's fine. But can I ask you? I'm going to say this. Um, when I years ago, probably twenty five years ago, I, I did a commercial. I got booked a commercial when I was young in Germany. Hot. In Germany. Oh wow! You went to Germany? Yeah. Wow. It was an IBM commercial. You had and such an amazing career. I've had weird things happen. Cool. But things go happen. all over the world. And yeah, I've been stuff. all over. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in Germany and I'm at a hotel and I go, "Is you have a spa?" They go, "No, but we have a spa down the in, in, in like they're broken German, whatever." So there's a spa down the street. I go to the spa, and I was, I'm not even paying attention. I'm just kind of taking on my clothes. I go in the steam room. And it's really steamy. And as a steam, ste- like when you open the door, you know, the steam dissipates a little bit. Right. Because of the air, you know. Right. And I, I noticed that there were like naked female women, kids, boy and girl, naked men. Everyone was in this steam room, right? And it's Americans view. And I, I felt I was covered up. You know, I got scared. You know what I mean? But it's Americans view on nudity that needs to change. Got it. Well, because they have all the nude beaches in Europe and all that. So you're saying... Yeah, it's how we're... Because of our weird religions that we have here, you know what I mean? I think we have a fucked up view on sexuality and nudity and all that stuff. And I think we just need to catch up because it's like, who gives a shit? Like, if if I see... I mean, honestly, if you and I were in a steam room and the hottest supermodel walked in completely naked, would you get a... Would you get a... Girl. Oh. Would you get erect? Um, I would say would I get erect? Maybe. Does she have a tattoo on her tip? Yeah. Then yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you would. You don't think I would? Socially, no. Like because because you're so nervous and anxious, bro. And like, imagine that you and I sit next to hot chick walks in naked, right? And I look at your dong, and it's fully hard. Would that be weird? You're right. I can't. So you're saying most people don't. Like when you go to a topless beach, I would think if I went to a topless beach in like Spain or something like that, I'd have a boner, but you're saying you wouldn't. You wouldn't because I've been in nude beaches. You think you would, but you don't. It's like, it's not a sexual environment. Because nudity, you're just like, oh, it's that person's it's body. Just a, yeah, it's like when you watch, when you were a kid, you watch National Geographic shit and you see like, you know what I mean? Indigenous people naked, you know what I mean? Africa, whatever. You never, jer- did you, you didn't jerk off to that shit, did you? No, um, no I... What well, the- <laughs> well, there was a show called Shaka Zulu that was on. I re- no, yeah, yeah, truthfully, I remember on, that. On, on CBS. Yeah, and I remember being a little kid, and and the like that the 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 people had no shirts on, or uh, the women had their breasts out. I remember not jerking off to it. Yeah, but I remember always being attracted to black women. Like, but I love love black women so much, and I think it's from that Shaka Zulu show where I was looking at naked, big African breasts. Yeah, but you've never gotten a boner somewhere awkward. 
Yeah, I, I, yeah, I've got, I've got a boner somewhere awkward, but not naked. You know what I mean? I've mm. got like in school, I've had a boner. I got caught jerking off in in the class. Me too. I would yeah, do yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah, but yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wasn't fully hand in my pants jerking off. I would rub my penis underneath the desk. And Sister Mary said she knew that I was what I was doing. No, I had my dick out. Why? I um I I I was in school and I was such a bad kid that they put me in one of those cubicle with the walls. So at the desk it had walls on it. Yeah. Right, so everyone had open, right? It's like so I was in the back mint. of the room, right, and oh. no one could see me. So I would literally take this is when I was doing drugs. So I would literally take up my biology notebook and line up meth lines and smoke in the cracks of the. Oh my god! Oh yeah, I, I was doing meth. But one day, and, and <laughs> what then was when the I, first day you did meth? What? I was twelve. So when I, so when I, um, but but how did you get into drugs like that though? How'd you get into drugs like that? What the fuck? Okay, here here's another question. What? How? Here, no, no, no! Listen to me. Listen. It's around. Listen, hold on. You do, you you have you have this is the this is a scenario you're in. Okay, you're doing meth, and now you find yourself in this scenario. You are, you're you're in a position where you're two inches inside your mom with your penis, but your father is two inches inside you in your butt. Do you move back to get more out of your mom, but then further into your father, or do you move forward to get away from your father, but then you're more into your mom? Well, my dad wouldn't be, either one of them wouldn't be like liking the situation. But right? I say they are because everyone's doing meth out of your textbooks. Yeah, but I, you've never done meth. Meth doesn't make you horny. What does it do then? Meth makes you just hype, like you can't eat and you're just up and aware and you're just like, you know what I mean? Life, you know what I mean? And you can't sleep for days. And you know what I mean? It's like, it's got this like kind of chemically induced, I can't even explain, it's very difficult to explain. So it's like when you would masturbate, on math, right? You'd have to masturbate, w and you would think fucked up things. Like what would you like? Fucking no, like a foot and a tit, and that's it. Like a, a <laughs> like right. a foot with a tit on it, right? And you know what I mean? Like if you're so, fucking so the foot. So, so when somebody yeah, commits yeah. a crime on meth and stuff, like they're not really like the, like they're out of their fucking minds. Truly. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's a great. Would I, you ever go back to meth if you needed to lose weight for a role? No, I'm sober. Mm. Mm. I also think at my age, if I did a line, my heart would just implode because yeah. I have like high blood pressure. I take blood pressure medication. Do you think you're going to die early anyway, like either way because of the drug use? You no. know what I mean? Or you think Koreans always live to be old people? I also do things that I think are helping me that, I, you know, which is probably not helping me, but like, like I drink E3, E3 Live. What's E3 Live? Is that a podcast? No. <laughs> yeah. E3 Live is oh, that's a blue, H3. It's, it's a blue, it's a blue algae. Okay. I guess these lakes in Washington have blue algae on top of the lake. They scoop it up and they freeze it. Mm. And um, I unfreeze, I like thaw it out a little bit and I'll pour it into a shot glass and I'll drink it. And it's got a lot of nutrients in that. I also take BioK, which is a probiotic. Mm. So I do that. When you take poops, is it S-shaped? That's how you know you have good yeah. digestive health. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So that so you're very healthy there. Yeah. Now what's critical race theory? All right. What's up? It's Chrissy Babbles, number one cell language learning app. You know I love it. I order in restaurants with Babbel. I ask for directions with Babbel. I gain a deeper understanding of culture with Babbel. I speak 15 different languages like I'm a spy because of Babbel. Seriously, if you want to learn how to how to uh, learn a new language. Don't worry about it, dude. You don't have to go to that country anymore. You don't have to, you know, have some BS learning uh, website do it for you. No, dude, you get Babbel's 15-minute lessons, and it's the perfect way to learn a new language. You can learn Spanish, French, Italian. I'm telling you, it's the best. I eventually will one day do an episode in full French, and it'll be because of Babbel. So here's the deal we got for you if you want to learn a new language. Go to B-A-B-B-E-L.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Put in the promo code CHAOS for an extra three months free. If you buy three months, you'll get an extra three months. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. -B 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 promo code CHAOS. Get an extra three months free on a three-month purchase. Yas. Keeps, baby. You know I'm Chrissy Keeps. I love Keeps. I love keeping my hair. I love when my friends keep their hair because two out of three people have male pattern baldness. 
Um, guys, can you guys just not, I know the baby's crying, but can you just not talk? See, this is what happens when you have a family, when you, this is the Chrissy Chaos podcast. There's just kids everywhere yelling and screaming. T.T. Jerry's doing the merengue over there. And then you will lose your hair because your stress goes up, but not with keeps. My hair will not fall out because I have K-E-E-P-S dot com. And you put in the promo code chaos and you get your first month free. So go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash chaos and you will get your first month free and you will keep that hair, baby. It's it's great. It's all FDA approved. It's not going to mess with your piece. It's not going to do any of that. You're just going to keep your hair and be cute, cute, cute. So go to keeps.com slash chaos. Get the first month free. Keeps.com. Keep the hair on your head. Yeah, they, everyone needs to pay. <laughs> everyone needs to pay for the shit that they did. No matter what the generation is, pay. <laughs> Cut a check. But to who? To the... Cut that out. Cut that out. Please cut that out. I will. No, okay. Because you guys fucked me before. Cut it out, okay? No, no, because we're going to send it to the ACP Chinese face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. I don't want to talk about it. I didn't know what it was, but now I no, don't, critical, still don't know what it is. Critical, but let's I, I, to move be on. honest with you, I don't really know what critical race theory is either. <laughs> oh, that's I right. Know. What are you talking just, about no, then? No, no, because, because I just, Candace Owens said it's bad, so, I, so it's bad. Oh, God. oh my God. I, I did want to know what you think about the alien invasion that's coming. Yes. Wait, what what are they well, no, but They're coming now. They're, they're already here. You th okay, so that that because we ask everybody. So you actually are on the side of you. I think have proof. They're inter intertwined into society already, bro. I'm gonna say something, okay? <laughs> so years ago, fuck forty. Oh, let's say I'm 50, 50. So thirty years ago, okay, I was in an A meeting. Okay, you started going to A when you were like twelve. Yeah, 13. when I yeah I got sober originally when I was sixteen, and then what? And then. Relapse or you've been sober since 16? No, I've relapsed a bunch of times. What was how, long, how long are you sober now? Almost two years, but I had 12 years, then 17 years, and now I have two years. Good. Good. Okay. Day by Can day. I finish my story? Or? Yeah. 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 I want you to finish your story. So I was, at, I was in Mission Valley in, in San Diego. I was at a meeting, and there was this large man. He had a beard. Like fat he, fuck. Yeah, not that fat. He was more of a bear like him, you know? Yeah, he was, and, very big and he was wearing community. like kind of a, a suit. And, you know, when you go, after you go to an AA meeting, you do fellowship. Mm. So um, you're not going to believe this story. So No, I, I will. This actually no, happened. Honestly, I will. Please, please don't do this. <laughs> please it, listen to everything I'm saying. So um, we go to a, a, uh, a diner and um, I go, what do you do for a living? Because, you know, I was in high school, like more yeah. but just graduated. And he, he goes, um. Well, I was, you know, I was in the military, and, uh, and now I'm uh, excommunicado, and uh, I'm kind of running from them. I go, the military? Yeah, I live out of my van. Hmm. Right? I know, right? And this is how dumb I am. I go, let me see. <laughs> 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 like, let me see your white van. Right? This is how dumb I am, right? Yeah. He goes, you want to see my white van? I go, yeah. So we go to his white van, and he, he opens up the back. It's during the day, right? So it's like... You know what I mean? There's people around. And he's a bed. But then along the side, it, he was like some sort of like, it was machine guns and a, a samurai sword and other weapons and stuff. I'm not kidding you. And then he had these filing cabinets. You know what I mean? And he goes, check this out. So he pulled out this green. And I'm, I'm, I've never seen a military, you know what I mean, folder before and documents before. Wow. But it had like gold, like kind of stamps on it. It didn't seem at the time, in my eyes, forged, right? But he opened it up, and there was all these pages on, like, the little grays, right? Interesting. Right? And I'm like, what is this? And they had, like, photos of, like, little grays, like, dancing at a club or whatever. I don't know what they had, right? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what are little grays? The little aliens. grays are aliens. Okay. Yeah. So she goes, they're, they're here. I go, right here, right now? No, he, they live amongst us, little wow. grays. And I go, um, how though? He goes, I, he didn't get into the detail, but I know that he said this. He said there was a military base. I don't know which one, but there was underground like societies of aliens that live under a military base. And we definitely are in, we cohabitate our military and them. And they just live amongst us. He says they have tel telepathy, right? They can read your wow. mind and all this stuff. And I go, all right, well, see you later. It was a good A meeting, huh? And I, <laughs> you know, like, I had to get the fuck out. I'd start, like, 
panicking. You know what I mean? So what do you? But so so ever since then, you believed in aliens? No, it, something happened. What happened? So then, I didn't see this guy. I forgot his name, but for years, M- Mitch. Let's just say, call him Mitch. And I remember being in a meeting, and I knew that another guy knew Mitch. It's like, hey, whatever happened to Mitch? He goes, oh, he was killed. <gasps> he was killed. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, they got him. Wow. He stole the documents and they got him. You know what I mean? So I've wow. always believed deep down inside that they could be around. Because it, the, at least the illustrations of like the little grays or the, like the little green men, they have Asian feet. They look Asian. What do you think of that? <laughs> they have an Asian feature and an Asian look. <laughs> I'm serious. I know you are. And that's the shame of it all. Because you're, because I'm not wrong. No. It's just the shit that comes out of your mouth. <laughs> no, it's funny. Like you're a little, little boy. Little baby boy. You're like a little ignorant boy. Um, no. They don't look Asian. Pimp, if we had a screen. Okay, so- can, I, 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 can I just say this, right? Mm-hmm. I've seen videos, right, of starving. I'm going to say what r- r- color it is. But you see videos of starving with the flies around their heads and mm-hmm. they haven't eaten and they have the belly, mm-hmm. right? And they're like, they look like eating, you know what I mean? And they're like, you know what I mean? And they always have like a cool vintage shirt, like, you know what I mean? Like Metallica, you know what I mean? 98, you know what I mean? Right. And you're like, how do they get that vintage shirt? But it's like, but you know, the Red Cross or whatever, gave it to them. But like, and they're like, e-e-e. you know, they, I could, I could, I could be like, they look, you know right. what I mean? Like aliens, right? I've seen some white dudes, right? What about the pr- progerio, your, pr- your progeria people? Progeria, like the ones that like the Benjamin Button disease that go backwards. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you have a lot of white dudes with the, the progeria. Progeria dude. disease. That's, yeah, they could be aliens too, dog. They could be aliens. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's very, 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 very true. Yeah, yeah, right. So I want you to take that back. But, well, well, how about this? Well, let me say this. Yeah. Maybe there's different types of aliens. Just like we have different types of humans, there's d- different nationalities of aliens that look- You think there's like a black- a- What's that, dog? <laughs> <laughs> you think that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I don't know. I do. Yeah. I do. I you think, think there's, there's that, I think, oh, don't, don't, don't. You know, yeah. aliens that do the bow, oh, and I think, they, I think they, there's they, an Asian alien on a bicycle right now, okay. riding around. But are you afraid of them, or, or would you? Ex- what if someone in your life is an alien and reveals it to you? I mean, here's one. It's those things that where it's like it's like the serenity prayer. You know, you accept the things you cannot change, and the courage to change the things I can. Right is the last bit of it. Right. Right. So it's like I can't change that. That's a reality. Right. So it's like I got to change me. Right. So it's like either if I'm uncomfortable with it, but I wouldn't like if Kalila said I'm an alien, right? Unless she she ripped off her face and she looked like progeria guy, I wouldn't be able to fuck that. Why? But why? But why wouldn't you be? Because then it's kind of like you're having sex with a different person. Because sometimes you could get hard to have sex with the same woman over and over and over again. But if she took off her face and she was an alien, but it's still her and her body, but it's she looks different. No, because they're they have no lips. You know. <laughs> right, yeah. you know they have what they, and, and, and it's a fucked up disease. It and is. I'm not making fun of the disease. The one, I, it, I, your body, it's crazy disease. It's like your body just accelerates. It's so fucked up. I'm like, I don't. I'm not make shaming them or no. making fun of them, right? But they're just be like, <laughs> <laughs> how much of this? How much of this episode do we have to cut out? A lot, right? I know, a lot, a lot. <laughs> you know, but um, what about the like um, Harlequin disease? What's the Harlequin disease? That one I don't. You don't know. know Harlequin disease? No. Oh, I got to show you. Harle- no, what? I've never heard of this. Harle- Harley Quinn the movie? No, Har- Har- yeah, it's kind of like the same. But is it like a- that? Yeah. So, um, the Harlequin disease. Harlequin disease. It's called Harlequin ichiosis. You never heard of it? No, ichiosis. Yeah. So the babies are born like this. Oh my god! Let me see. And so what happens then? You have no skin. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. They're born with no skin. But can they live? Yeah, they're no, yeah, they're they're, they're adults. They, they, they. Yeah, but some people are born with these like these you know these skin diseases, right? I saw this one thing, man, where, and I, I'm not making fun of this at all, and I'm not gonna make fun of it, but um, where his mom? Why am I? Why am I having? <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was working, but um, I know this is so. This kid has like the skin disease and. You know, for him to go to school, her mom, his mom has to wrap her in like like a mummy, right? Every part of his body, Ugh. right? And then after school, his skin 
gets like dried onto the bandages, right? So it's like peeling like just nerve endings. Every day. Every day. Like- and it takes like hours because he has to go to the bathtub and he's screaming. Ah! You know what I mean? Crying. And his mom's, I'm sorry. sorry. And her, that's what his mom does for him. Every single day, except for the weekends, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you be pissed at your mom, though, and be like, why are you, like, you hurt me every day? Like, no, because I think the kid, no, no, I think the kid, I think the kid like, knows. Why can't he just go to school with with his skin like that? Is it an infection risk or and all that stuff? Well, I mean, this is probably, I saw this, like, years before, you know, Zoom. So I would probably Zoom it now. I would go Zoom for yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, I would go yeah, Zoom. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would yeah, go I would in class. Just, yeah, 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 no reason to go in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but like, um, you know, I think we, we that alone, think about that alone, that you and I yeah. are. We don't have to deal with that. We don't, it's just so many things we don't have to deal with. Well, how do you help your anxiety? What do you do? We do a, a segment here called Anxiety Tuesday. What do you do for your mental health every day? Is there something you do for your mental health? Yeah. What is it? I breathe. I concentrate on my breathing. I close my eyes Mm -hmm. and I try to focus on the moment. What's the best type of tea to drink? Why would you ask me that? Yeah. What's the best type of tea? And then you have to, no, no, no. (laughs) Here's the thing. You have to question yourself. You know, you're an interesting guy. What do you think? I'll tell you why you're an interesting guy. Because when I first met you, I go, this is cosmopolitan. This is a future person, right? This guy is like, you know, honestly, when I first saw you, I go, this is, what a perfect human specimen, right? Yeah. He's good looking, white, really nice guy, you know, on the surface, right? And then it's like, you uh, remember when we went to breakfast with Opie? Yeah, that was we a went nice to day. That was such a great day. I remember it. And I didn't, I, I really walked away from that having the impression of like, that guy's going to be like the biggest star in the world because like, he has all of it. He's just yeah. so... Yeah, liberal and open and nice, and then you just take off one little layer of it, and you go, "Oh, it's QAnon, yeah, or, or yeah, whatever." Yeah. Like, there's something going on there that's yeah. like not right. You know what I mean? So, do you think that's going to prevent me from making it to the to these uh, other things that you thought about me? You like, you think I'm not going to make it probably in entertainment because of that? Unfortunately, I think because you've had deals. You've had sitcom deals for networks. Yes. Right? You've had you have a deal now. I honestly unfortunately think that this is just the beginning for you. <laughs> like it's going to I'm going to go big. If you play your cards right and you play the game, you could. I don't want you to, you know, I just I just, I hate like, you know, I'm not going to name names, but I know dudes that self-sabotage. Yeah. Right, they get a like a, a huge thing, and they'll show up on set like I want to rewrite the whole script. Right, right, and then they're like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Right, right. I just don't want you to be one of those dudes. No, I it's wouldn't. a game, dude. It's a dumb game, and just play it. Would you be supportive of me if I did get to these next levels, or would you say, "Hey, oh, he dude, made I would me love feel to comfortable." Be, dude, imagine as an Asian Pacific Islander. Excuse me. What's between Asian and Asian Pacific Islander? Okay, let me just. Let me just educate you something right now. Educate you about something right now. Okay. All right. Listen, fresh from San Diego, California, come the only sunglasses brand I'm ever going to wear again because I like San Diego because they're about freedom. So I'm talking about Blender's Eyewear. That's my baby crying in the background, but I'm going to put on some Blender's Eyewear, and I guarantee you she's going to stop crying. I haven't gotten my free promo uh, box of Blender's Eyewear yet, but once I do, you will see them, and I will be Chrissy Sunglasses, Chrissy Cutie Glasses. So all you have to do, first of all, and it's not just sunglasses, by the way. Blender's has prescription glasses, readers, blue lights, snow collection with goggles. They have all that stuff. Blender's team of in-house designers are constantly coming out with new styles from orange polarized wraparounds. We love orange here. Tortoise shells. We love the Ninja Turtles. And classic gold arm on black lenses. Ooh, those are cute. Maybe Pimpy will get some new glasses because the uh, people are getting sick and tired of the orange ones. Um, so if you go to, all you got to do, if you want to get 15% off your Blender's purchase, you go to blenderseyewear.com and put in the promo code Chaos VIP. That's C H A O S VIP. Go to blenderseyewear.com. Put in the promo code Chaos VIP. That's C H A O S VIP for 15% off. Rocked with pride worldwide. Yeah, now I'm listening. Pride, baby. 
All right, this summer, Bespoke Post is here to take your adventures to the next level with a new lineup of must-have box of awesome collections. Bespoke Post partners with small business and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods every single month. Bespoke Post, first of all, the box of awesomeness, it's pretty awesome, okay? I mean, there's just, you know, there's travel and outdoor gear to breezy summer styles and grooming goods. The box of awesome has collections for every part of your life. It is actually pretty cool. There's just so much stuff that can fit in this box. To get started, take the quiz, boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box. That's what I did, and I got a box of fun stuff. One of them included a dildo. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel anytime you want. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. So that's a pretty good deal. And we make the deal even sweeter here. You get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code chaos at checkout. That's a boxofawesome.com code chaos for 20% off your first box. I love box. Literally, literally, dude, there's nothing Asian about me. Right. I don't know the language. I eat white food. I consume white entertainment. The music I listen to is like the Velvet Underground, a bunch of fucking dirty whites, you know what I mean? Of, in, a bunch of dirty whites in a fucking, you know, in Andy Warhol's factory talking about heroin. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm so emo, white. I don't know anything about what you're saying. And that's pretty much the reason why I'm not fucking invited to do these NAA, Asian, PSA, you know what I mean? Right. ARP, you know what I mean? you know what I mean? Things. It's because... I'm, they just kind of look at me and go, what is that? But I'm not what you think that I am. You keep, you know, people like you, it's like, you know, I remember working at construction once and there was two guys that did one job. We were like, uh, we picked up like nuts, nuts and bolts at like, you know, at Home Depot or whatever and bring it to this job site, right? That I worked construction. But one day, one of my buddies who had a certain store that he would only go to, he was sick. So I went to that store. And when I went to that store, the guy that worked there goes, hey, man, where's that other guy? The American-looking one. Oh. That's what this guy said to me. I would never say that. I know. I'm just saying, yeah. though. It's like, And I walked away from that going, what does that even mean? It's like I'm so American. I'm just as American as anybody that lives in this country. When was your first kiss? Julie Rogelstad. White Jewish girl. Yeah. Where in San Diego? Middle school. Did, Did it she, go anything more? Did it get a She tongue kissed me in the bathroom. Did she touch your peeps? No. And I remember going, and then it was a Friday. She tongue kissed me in the bathroom on a Friday. That Monday, I went to school. And that whole weekend, I couldn't sleep. I had this like, <sighs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, life is amazing. And then when I showed up Monday... And still to this day, I never talked to her again. She just looked at me as if I was like a lamp fixture. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was like total. What about the first time you had sex? The first time I had, basically, I was a virgin until I was 23. That's pretty long. And I was at, so I was at the La Jolla Comedy Store, and the manager goes, hey, kid, uh, I think you're good enough to do five minutes before the headliners come in on the weekends. So I'll just, you work the door, but then you go up on stage, you do five, 10 minutes, you bring on the feature. You, and so I go, cool. So one night I had this like unusually good set. You know, I was young. I was 23 years old. Right. And I, after the set, you know, you're hosting and there was this beautiful blonde girl with big tits. Real or young? Fake or real? Real. Wow. But skinny too. Oh my goodness. So nice. super skinny, blue Iowa eyes, blonde hair. She must have been, she, I think she was 21 at the time, right? Just, you know. And um, this is when Princess Diana died, I think. And I go, because everyone was sad in the audience. You know what I mean? I don't know who Princess Diana was. But I remember going up to her after the show when we were walking out, and I put my hand on her back. I go, I'm sorry about Princess Diana. And then I just went and, <laughs> I, I just said that. And then the I funny just, thing. Yeah, and I just kind of sweeped up, you know what I mean, a after the show. So it's like one in the morning, one fifteen. The manager goes, calls me in the office, and I go in the office. And she go, he goes, "You have a phone call." So I pick up the phone, and it's this girl, right? She goes, "You want to hang out?" Already, I mean, imagine, of course, right? So then, like a week later, I was in her mom's closet <gasps> in Oceanside, 
and I was 69ing her, right? I never 69 before. Why in her mom's closet? Her mom was out of town, but she, I don't know. I don't I don't remember why we were in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think her brother was downstairs. Or you know, so there was a reason we were so hiding. 69 in the closet. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I'm not kidding you, dude. I was like looking up at the ceiling and I couldn't breathe because of the tears. I was crying. Wow. And I, I got like emotional. Yeah. And I went, thank you, God. <laughs> it's not bubbles. Like yeah. I was so grateful. Because you had the, the dude, I had face. prime. It was just for me like a young white. Yes. It had all the trifectas for me. If it was a four foot two girl named Ting Ting from Vietnam, it, you know what I mean? It would be, you know what I mean? It would be like, you know, it'd be like, ah, uh, it was cool. But you know what I mean? But when they're like a suburban white, that was a nice Being hit. a f- little weird Asian dude, it's like a different thing, bro. Did it go on more than once? Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then I broke up with her. And then, um, and then it was good after that. I mean, it was like, you know, I had weird, like one time. I um maybe a couple years after that I was opening for Polly. Sure. This is you, you, okay talk about sabotage. He's on stage and I'm in the lobby of this you know when you open you go to the lobby you get a drink and this is like in um the late 90s. And these two college girls were like we we, we don't like Polly we, we thought you were hilarious. And I go, "Oh, thank you." You know, and they go, you want a blowjob? Just go, like that. Yeah, yeah. I go, oh, thank you. You're right. <laughs> so there was like, Paulie had a limo there, right? Some limo driver was going to drive him around after the show. So I go, let's go. In the, I asked the limo driver, can me and these girls go to the limo, right? We're giving him a blowjob. And then the door opens. Oof. And it's Paulie. Oh, boy. And he goes, what about me, dude? That's what he says. <laughs> right? So then he grabs both of them. And they walk to the tour bus because we were in a tour bus. So now I'm sitting in the limo with my pee-pee out, just, you know, the rage. Yeah. Would you be angry? Oh. Yeah. I thought when you said, what about me, dude, you pushed them to the side and started blowing him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. That's you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but then this is the first time I ever stuck up for myself. Yeah. I, I'd rather get banned from the comedy store or whatever the consequences. I'm going to finish. So I pulled my pants up. And I went to the tour bus and I opened up the door and I thought he was going to go get out or whatever. And he goes, sit here, dude. Right. So I sat next to Paulie. <laughs> right. And it was interesting what happened. What happened? You know what happened? Oh my God. I blew him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You watched Paulie have sex with those girls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did want to ask you if uh, yeah, you, one believe, more question for if you believed in ghosts. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, so my I grew up in Poway. Where's that? It's in San Diego. Okay, and we our house is on an Indian burial site. Mm. Mm-hmm. Damn. So, but it was only in my brother. Like, okay, so when you when you go into my house, you dr- go drive up the driveway, the garage, and then when you open up to get in the house, it's my room, my brother's room, that hallway, and then the rest of the house is cool. But it's only in that area where weird shit happened. Really? And here's how I know. Because when my dad would my da- when my dad would come home from work, you could hear him park. And you could always hear him run past my brother and I rooms as fast as he can. Hi, 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 hi. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was literally, hi, hi, right? Because he, he knew. He, later in life, he goes, yeah, there was something dark and crazy, you know? <laughs> really? Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. The, the evil, he said. Evil there. I go, well, we didn't move, bitch. I mean, we, my brother and I, so my brother and I had both possession stories. Really? Yeah, where my mom called a priest, not a priest, but like a reverend from the Korean church to come over and do, and my brother was like, you know what I mean? Right. I'm not kidding you. Naked, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And the guy trying to draw, you know what I mean? Right. And the, people are like crying. I, I talk to, and my brother then asked my brother. My brother would take tear out Bible verses, and it was like you know um, the movie Seven. You know what I mean? When yeah. John Doe's like just creepy. You know what I mean? All over the pasted all over the world crosses, right? 
me, I was on drugs, right? So I'm like, come get it, bro. You know what I mean? I didn't give a fuck. I wanted to die. Right. Right? So, but one day, it was a Saturday, I couldn't move my body. <gasps> like, I opened my eyes. I couldn't move my body. Because it was you were possessed. I don't know what was going on. You but weren't there, doing meth then? No. I couldn't open my... my I was going to try to smoke some weed when I woke up. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't move my body. And I was like, I can't move my body. And then I started having, like, weird thoughts. You know what I mean? <sighs> like, violent thoughts. Mm-hmm. About hurting yourself or hurting others? Everybody. Wow. Why people a lot? You. People like you. <laughs> people like you. I would get it. Yeah. So then what I did was I, I mustered all my strength and I jumped in the swimming pool. We had a swimming pool. Heated? No, it was Solar? cold. It was super cold. Above and ground it, and or it, in ground? It, outside. Above ground? Above ground, yeah, yeah. Okay. And every, so every time that would happen, I would just jump in the swimming pool. That was my thing. I didn't need a fucking exorcist or wow. a reverend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so, 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 but why didn't your dad just, like, like, if my house was haunted, you would, like, if this house was haunted, you'd sell it. No. Right? It depends on. You would deal with it. When, when people say their houses are haunted, <laughs> like the comedy store's haunted, right? Well, but Mitzi no, would. I didn't know that. Do you knew that? Yeah, Ghost Adventures went there a few months ago. Yeah, so Mitzi would only get, say Mitzi's office, she would get um, some exorcist from Europe <laughs> to fly in once a year. And only do her room because she thought that that's where the energy was. And apparently, if you look through the stained glass window through the door, if you look through it, you can see telephones and things levitating and stuff. Wow. But they boarded it up. So even I've been at the comedy store for almost 30 years, right? 25 years. You know, I've never been in that room. I've never been, you know what I mean? Because they just boarded it up. You can't get oh, wow. there, right? So it's like, you know, I've seen Gus there. Who's Gus? Come on, man. Do you know? Gus is um, one of the ghosts that haunts the store. Oh, that haunts the comedy. Gus the ghost. Well, he's a cute a, name. He was a murder. Uh, well, so in the 50s, um, the comedy store used to be a club called um, Zero's. And it used to be the hottest club in Hollywood, but it was run by the mob. And during the days, people would get killed in the, where the main room is. You've been to the comedy yeah. store, right? So that used to be the showroom. And there's these, if you look up on the ceiling, there's like these little openings up above where you st- pe- people would snipe, you know what I mean, people. Wow. Wow. So I guess a guy named Gus died there, right? And so um, one time when Carl LeBeau and Sam Kinison moved to L.A. from Houston... They sl- they snuck in the store to sleep because they were poor, right? Right. And they slept on the main room stage. And Carl LeBeau, t- he passed a couple of months ago. God yeah, bless him. Yeah, I know. All right, and LeBeau um, tells a story where he wakes up and he sees Sam Kinison being levitated by his foot. And he's like three feet off the, off the fucking... But Kinison's base. asleep still. Yeah, right? But here's something that I witnessed... There's a comic by the name of Pete. That's his real name. I don't want to say his last name. And he was in the belly room. He performed. Have you been in the green room at the in the belly room? Yes. Okay. So from the, the showroom to the green room, there's a little hallway you walk through. Yeah. Right? This dude's like my height. Right? If you look at the ceiling, it's pretty high. It's probably this high, the way the ceiling is. Maybe a little shorter. And um, Pete has a good set in the belly room, walks down the hallway, and then his head hits the ceiling. What? He gets thrown up in the ceiling. He breaks his fucking spine. What? Yeah. And he, he, he he's now has to go through surgery for ye- years. In fact, he sued the store, and he got some sort of compensation. That's what he, I've never seen that this guy before, before after this event. Wow. But... Apparently, you know what I mean? I was there downstairs, but apparently people that witnessed it, right, saw him just being thrown up there like Gus. It's Gus. In fact, me and Johnny Sanchez, who's a comedian, back in um, 2002, maybe, 2001, we were in the parking lot of the store and we saw Gus for the first time. We both saw him. We're in the parking lot. 
we had dropped one of my cars off to, to go do a gig in Bakersfield. And when we drove back, it's four in the morning. I'm getting my car. We're saying goodbye, whatever, right? And we both look at the window up above on the parking lot. And we see a white face, a top hat, two hands on the window looking down, down on us like this, right? And, we, and Johnny and I go, ah, like, like that, right? And we, we, then we look at each other, we look up, and he's gone. Whoa. Holy shit. That's the first time I saw Gus. Oh, my God. So I don't, if you notice, I don't stay there past midnight. You'll leave oh. immediately. Yeah. Wow. The activities after midnight. We got to go. In yeah, we got to go check it's it It's crazy, out. man. Like, even the ghosts are past at the comedy store. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not past Wait, that. Well, here's, now, here, I'm, th I'm glad you said that. Because I, I, I was there the other night. And not, listen, I love the comedy store. It's my home. I love everyone that performs there, right? But I feel like the culture needs to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think guys like Mark Normand, you, uh, Sam Morrill, some of these white dudes that are really hot, Schultz, you know, um, my very good friend, Giannis, very good friend, um, should just automatically be, if they're in town, get call in spots. Yeah. You know what I mean? And also first and also the women from New York, you know what I mean? Yeah. Come in and they call and they cuz ST does that with LA comics. I mean, sure. I'm a regular there, you know. I I, I you show, call in, she'll put you on. Of she'll course. put me out. Yeah, yeah. And I think that there should be that sort of culture there at it's the like store. It's like stale there now, you think a little bit, like the same comedians kind of. I don't want to say that. I mean, I I I I I I like the store because we develop comics, right? But it's also like it's one point of view almost. I think we just need a, we need to open it up a bit, and we need a lot more black dudes. We need a lot more Mexican dudes. We need a lot more women. You know what I mean? We just gotta mix it up a bit. You know, right? And um, but I get like there are a lot of comics. Let me ask you this question. I see you know a comic that you start. How long you been doing comedy? Um, I started in two thousand nine, so twelve years. Okay, so in two thousand nine, right? You probably started with a bunch of people at open mic, right? Hell yeah. Right, and probably some of them are really nice people that you like, right? Sure. But are, are some of those people not funny? Sure. Okay. At what point do you kind of cut ties or you tell them this is not working? See, for me, I would never tell them. I'm still friends with some of those people that are still like doing pretty much the same gigs we did at Open Mic or, as Open Mics. Because for me, it's like, you know, it's not up to me to tell them. Like, because my, because if I tell you you're not funny, that's just my, I'm, comedy is so subjective. It, it may not be funny to me. But they're not getting gigs. The thing is, if you're not getting gigs... Is gig it subjective? Huh? Is it? Yeah. You don't think it's subjective? There's not... I think, you know, when there are... Oh, it's hard to say. When I see someone like Jeff Dunham, for instance, mm -hmm. right? It's not my style of comedy. I don't... Puppets, you know, ventriloquism, whatever, right? But I can still look at it. Like, let's say... No, no, fuck him. Let's say Carrot Top, mm -hmm. Right? I can still look at someone like Carrot Top and, and see what the crowd sees, you know what I mean? And his get their reaction. I get why he's got a funky look, weird look, you know what I mean? I get why people like him or why he gets what the stuff that he gets, right? But I also get his limitations, why he's not an A-list Hollywood star. I get all those things, right? It's like, um, so it's like I might not be a fan of somebody's style of comedy or even ever have to laugh at them, right? There are a lot of comics that are great that I don't laugh at. There are a lot of comics that I see that every time they, I just laugh because that's just my, that's my thing, you know? They, they, they speak my language or whatever, but it's like, but there are a lot of comics that we started with that just don't have it. Yes. Right? I agree. And, and what Mitzi said to me years ago, and she said, you know, it's a sin to support mediocrity. Mm. It's a sin. Merch, merch, merch. Sin to, to support, support mediocrity. mediocrity, right? And it's like it, we do a disservice to comedy if we don't say anything. Right. So who do you want to say into the cameras that's mediocre that you. needs to quit? <laughs> this is what the whole thing is, you. <laughs> Listen, I just want to say before I quit, because I do. I I'm have, kidding. You're one of the Christy best. Comedy .com. We just put shows up at the Dania Improv in Miami, Florida. 
We got extra seats open that just opened up in Philly. Most of the things are sold out. Thank you guys so much for finally in my career. I'm selling tickets because of you guys, because of the Christians, the chaotics. Um, but Florida, Danny Improv, September 17th, 18th. West Palm Beach is on sale right now. Also, Phoenix, Arizona is on sale. Nashville's on sale. These are all in October, November. Newark, New Jersey is on sale. ChristyComedy.com. Where, do, where can people find you? Nothing. But I don't want to promote. But my point is, is this. Why don't you want to promote? <laughs> you already sell tickets. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going this. on the road until January. I have nothing, no dates. Oh, wow. I have dates because I'm, I'm, I have the second kid, so I have to pay. Yeah, yeah. The but when I mean, I, but um, does it feel good to be selling out now? Yeah, it feels good. It feels, it feels like um, I'm not at a point yet where like every, it's a guarantee it's going to sell out, but almost every, the last like 15 weekends we've had, they've all sold out. I think it's a guarantee. I think from now on, it's a guarantee. Yeah. There's no, no way, unless you have like six comics in a city that's already doing a headlining show right. against yours, and they would have to be very big comics, you know, yeah. like a Chappelle or a Bill Burr or whatever, yeah. but I think that if you're going to a, any market that you're going to sell out every show. Yeah, it's it's the, the ones that are cool to see is like eight shows in Philly sold out. Insane. You know, all those things where I'm like, oh shit, like, is it time to go to like the theaters and no, stuff now? No, never. Not, no, yeah, but that, but that's my agent was like, stay at the comedy. You're gonna keep getting good, good, good at the comedy clubs. Keep practicing. Yeah, no, that it's like, are you getting a door deal? Obviously, yeah. Uh, so I'll make more money at the comedy clubs than you're the theater. Killing it then. Yeah, I can imagine you're killing it. Well, I gotta pay for the baby. Mom. No, it's not. It's you're getting this fucking guy. I gotta pay for the baby. It's like. <laughs> One eight shows in Philadelphia. I'm not going to say what the price is, <laughs> but eight show in Philadelphia sold out. And if you're getting a door deal, yeah, you don't have to work for another five months. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Pay for the baby. Yeah. And if you're doing every weekend, you're making chunks of change, right? You're fine. When did you start really selling tickets, like selling out where it was a, it was going to happen? Was it a long time before you did? Or you? Oh my god, it took. Dude, there were some clubs. There were some sh weekends. So up until six years ago, where I would I'd have to like cancel shows because nobody. Would. So it wasn't until Tiger Belly took off that it you started to really sell. Yeah, but it, 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 that was gradual. But one day I remember going to Schaumburg. Oh, the in Illinois. It's a huge room. It's yeah. like six hundred, seven hundred seats that yeah. room, right? And I used to do like fifteen fucking press things in the morning. Clown, it's clown shit. Like, you For, know, it's still not to be sold out. What? For it's still not to be sold out. Still not sell out, right? Yeah. I remember them, and then I used to have to fly out like on a Wednesday. Sure. I have to get up early. I remember going to Schaumburg, and there, uh, my flight was, I said the flight was at on Friday during the day. My show was Friday night. So I go, what the fuck? I got no press? And they're like, yeah, they just felt like since you sold out, I go, I sold every show out in that room. Yeah. They go, yeah, you sold out a month ago. And I was like, that's when I knew I was like, "Oh shit! Oh shit! This is amazing!" And that was only six years ago. Yeah, because no, this is maybe four years ago. I, wow. I, I mean, but then you know, you I would go to every market. Some markets I always did well, but like some markets where I would eat it would sell out, and I'd just be like, "Something's going on here," and it's just been yeah really amazing since you know, and it's like yeah, well, but all that stuff at least like on my end is with same with you is like. It's the podcast, it's the internet, it's the things that me and Homeless Pimp are creating that's causing the ticket sales, not the things that the industry gave me. And I learned I that. mean, it's interesting that you say that because, you know, I had Schultz on here a couple of years ago and, and Schultz was giving me an education about, like, you know what I mean, the internet versus showbiz and we don't need to grovel for the industry. And you're you right. need both. No, you're right. No, you're absolutely right. We do, actually, no, we don't. We don't need them, right? We don't, but I still have... I still like being doing those other things. Right. Like I like being on a set. I like learning and being scared and doing a, a difficult scene and then driving home or going back to my hotel room going, wow, you pulled it off. And just feeling proud of myself, you know, because a lot of pressure and whatnot. Right. My point is, is that I like all those aspects of it. I like doing cooking shows like reality TV. I don't give a fuck what it is. I like doing all kinds of shit. You, know you were I mean? great on Nailed It. Me and my kids were watching. My family watching Nailed It. Yeah, I like Nailed My it. point is, is that yeah, but um, but the you're right. I mean, at the end of the day, we don't need 
it's like I was I was with, I was talking to my manager yesterday and she's like complaining about money a little bit that and she doesn't she, have money and then she's like ah it's, you know there's some struggles some of my clients and I go because I know I don't give her a dime of this uh, right she gets the road though but you're not on the road till I'm January. not on the road right so she's like <laughs> she gets my TV money though right but it's like she's just like and but you you can oh, like and my agents don't get a bit but my no. point is is that Same. but six years ago when I started this thing. I remember calling them and going, I need help with this new podcast thing. Uh, we don't really get involved with that sort of business, you know. Um, so just do it on your own. You'll be fine. Just do it as a hobby or whatever. You know what I mean? And then, like, you yeah. imagine, like, I don't know anything about that world. You know, so nah, right? And it's like every, like, six months they'll call me and go, oh, well, we have an ad agency that wants, we already have that built shit. Yeah, we got. We yeah, I already have all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They try to find different ways. Mm -hmm. Well, what if we just, you know, what if we book it? We book, and I say, like, no, I get phone calls. Yeah, no, we don't need your. Brand. We don't but, need it. But even like, if you're not like, even if you're not like in comedy and all that, it's kind of like one of those things where it's like you. We live in a world now, like the world now, because of the internet. Like, there is no reason you can't create whatever your dream is. You can YouTube how to do it and figure out how to do it and keep going. It doesn't matter what your career path is. You can do anything because of YouTube, because of the internet. My, one of the guy, a guy I know, no, not no handy skills at all. Did, didn't I'm not handy. Didn't know how to do anything. He told me he just redid his whole bathroom in his house on YouTube. He's like, I just YouTubed it. I watched a 45 minute YouTube. How That's to incredible. Do, they talked. They they told me the supplies to buy. They told me the tools to buy. My wife said it was okay to try. He said, and now I know how to do a fucking bathroom. I didn't even know how to hold a hammer. A, a month before I learned just oh, so YouTube, YouTube was it. fucking with like plumbers and other people's yep. businesses yeah. and stuff. Everyone's that's crazy. He just figured out how to do it. That's an innocent thing. He's like, dude, it's simple. You just take the toilet off, you reconnect the toilet, you put the grout down. He's like, the YouTube step by step showed me how to do it. That's incredible. Yeah, it's funny. Like I, I saw. I have a friend named Janina Gavankar. Gavankar. She's a big actress. Yeah, she's in the morning show. She, single? You know, <laughs> no, she's got somebody. <laughs> Is he single? What? Is he cute? Yeah, he's cute. What do you think he bench presses? Not as much as you. Okay. But you got a woman. But Janina, go, Janina wants to direct. And she Cut that just, part out. <laughs> Janina, <laughs> Janina, Janina wants to direct. So she just kind of like got her money together and she got a cinematographer, or like a really good one. And so when I was in Hungary, she was in the movie with me. Me and Edgar Ramirez, she goes, can you see my short? And, we, you know, whenever... Anybody says that you're like that's the last thing you want to do. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's like when a comic goes, listen to my tape. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen it's to like, my album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, but we did because she's an actress, and we saw it, and we were both like, like me and Edgar were like in this dark room watching it on the TV, her short film, and we had goosebumps. It looked like a David Fincher movie. Like it was the cinematography was so good, the acting wow. was so good, right? And and then now I'm thinking. You know, what is Hollywood going to, like, once, yeah. once the ca camera technology gets yeah. so good where we can make our own movies? How about this? Yeah. Homeless Pimp came to the set of the, my, the True TV Backyard Bar Wars show the other day. Yeah. He was shooting all behind-the-scenes footage. True TV hit us up. They want his footage. It's amazing. Because they were like, oh, his cameras, like, are as good as ours. They're no, like, it's, it's over. We could shoot a film. I, I want your classic comedians to just shoot a film together, all of you. Yeah, like, we want to oh, do, bro. like, a big, like, oh, yeah. Do it, so check it out. This is something that I've been mentioning for years. I've been trying to get it off the ground. I go, why can't we pool New York, L.A., right? Do like a Caddyshack. Uh, like yes. an ensemble uh, Caddyshack-y kind of a movie. Why don't we do right? it? Yes. But we get really good writers. I don't want no comic, open mic or comic to write uh -huh. it, right? I want like a real legitimate writing team, right, to write it, right? I want a legitimate, maybe a good director, a legitimate director and a cinematographer, right? But we can still produce it ourselves. Yeah. Hire these people to do it, right? Yeah. We can have production meetings, you know what I mean, through Zoom with New York and LA. I really think that we could come up with something that's really cool and just release it. And it'll be better than like, you know, I know a lot of YouTubers make movies. I've been in a couple of those movies where big YouTube stars like, come do my movie and at Lionsgate will do it. Yeah. And it's just but it, they, they don't they they're not as funny as right. us. Us. Because well, we would use Burr. Yeah. We would use guys that can do it. Yeah, we would use, but that, but we, it's literally all that, that the beauty about right now is all we have to do is literally just do it and it's done. There's no gatekeeper at all. We just have to say, 
we're actually going to do it. That where it used to be 15 years ago, you actually couldn't just do it. But now yeah. you actually can. Yeah, but we would still don't have to get like extras and set decorators and, oh, fuck and it. let's I not mean, do it then. If you guys just pulled all your podcast producers to go produce it, I bet it would get done pretty quickly. Like Homeless Pimp, you, George. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody just going to do it. All, all the guys. Yeah. You guys want to do that? We'll give you some of the Patreon money. Of course I but do. We, but we but we but honestly though, I'd I would before we I would really want to do this. But before we do it, I would still want a script that I I can look at and go, this this is something that Ben Stiller would do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like like a mm -hmm. legitimate right. script that's really good. And also, not everyone gets to do it. No, no, no. I'd we have to handpick. Yeah, I, I yeah I don't want no like because I know a lot of you New York guys use like homeless people on your video. You know, like an Opie and Anthony, pimps. they'll have some sort well, of hobo <laughs> that sucks a fucking bull dick or no, whatever. That's Opie and Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I don't like that. The you first time I, mean? I met you, you were sucking the bull. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't want that. You know what I mean? No, so I want like legitimate guys, you know what I mean, and women that have acting chops, like you know, Javier Bardem. What? Javier. I mean, we could also get real yes. legitimate, like Kevin Bacon or whatever. Yeah, Keanu we could get. We they'll do it people. because they probably listen to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. Hey, email Chrissy Chaos Podcast at gmail dot com. Whatever title of the movie you think is good, or go to Patreon dot com. How long have we gone? Comedy. You're about an hour 10, hour 17. Yeah, it's Sorry. way too long. Patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Don't you think it's way too long? It was long. But we're gonna 45 add, minutes. And then I know, but we're going to... Yeah, but it's so easy to talk to you, and I didn't even say anything, one thing funny. Not all, for an hour and 10. Not well, can one I put the air on thing. then real quick, and then we'll do it? What? Nope. Okay, I'll keep going if I put the air on a little bit. No, we have to go anyway, because I have to go open up for yeah, Brendan Schaub at the Ha 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 Comedy Club. Well, oh, you going to the Ha Ha tonight? Yeah, the Ha 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 Ha. You want to come? What time is it at? 8 and 10. <sighs> No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. It doesn't well, seem that Thank you for coming on. All right, bud. I wish it was great.